Many of you might think this is crazy, but I've been waiting two years for this. So let me have my moment. So I've been using the 2080 Super since 2019. I did want the 3080 FE, but I couldn't get it anywhere. So I ended up waiting for the 4080. It's much bigger and more expensive than I expected, of course, but I was pretty set on purchasing as I had started gaming on my PC a lot more, as well as doing some Blender rendering here and there. When it comes to my old PC build, I was using the iQnix ZX1. Amazing case, design of it is awesome. And I think it's one of the best looking PC cases and also one of the most compact. The build quality of it is incredible, made from pretty thick aluminium and it feels like an absolute tank. The machining on this case is one of the best I've ever seen and it actually really reminds me of Apple machines. It served me well since April 2021, but now that I've bought the 4080, it definitely will not fit in such a compact case. So I'll be replacing it with the NR200 P Max. Huge shout out to my friend Ali from Optimum Tech. He recommended this one to me as it makes the most sense for my build. Check out his channel if you haven't heard of him already. He makes awesome videos on SFF PCs and other related topics. He's basically my go-to guy when it comes to PC stuff. This case just made the most sense for me as it already comes pre-installed with a 850 watt power supply and an all-in-one liquid cooler. And of course, it can fit the huge 4080. From looking at a bunch of reviews online, temps are also really good, so I won't have to worry about having a super loud PC. I don't think it looks as nice as my previous case, but I think it still looks pretty good in this gray color that I have. It also comes with the option of a mesh side panel or a tempered glass side panel. I ended up going for the glass side panel purely because I think it looks better. It does make it a few degrees hotter, but I'm all about the aesthetics, of course. Anyway, if it does get a bit too toasty, I can always switch back to the mesh side panel. Also, considering the NR200 P Max includes a AIO and it also includes the 850 watt power supply, for $350, this whole package is actually a really good value for money. When it comes to the rest of the build, I have the AMD Ryzen 7950X CPU. I have the ASUS ROG Strix X670EI motherboard. Along with this motherboard comes this external contraption that has shortcut buttons and a volume dial. I'll be honest, I will not be using it because it is hideous. <laughs> Funny story about the 7950X and this motherboard, one of my private Discord members actually sent them both to me for this build. Thank you so much, Owen, if you're watching this video. I'm also using 16 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM from Crucial. Should be enough for me as I will mostly be gaming. For storage, I have the rapid one terabyte Samsung 990 Pro. The read write speeds of this thing should be insane. I also put in another one terabyte SSD from Crucial. This one is nowhere near as fast, but it will be fine for gameplay recordings and some non-demanding games. I also installed two Noctua 120mm slim fans in the bottom of the case for some extra airflow. These are set to exhaust mainly because from looking at other reviews that's what seems to be recommended to get better temps it's a pretty tight fit so cable management isn't the best luckily because i've stuck with mostly black for everything you can't really see the cables too much anyway honestly i'm more impressed at how everything fits in the first place it's a fairly small case building in this case was also really easy it's one of the easiest cases i built in mainly because you can really take it apart you can take off most of the panels on it and just take things apart as you wish to get all of the parts in there. The GPU bracket is also pretty interesting. You mount the GPU to the bracket itself and then put the bracket inside the case. And yeah, just a really easy way to get it all working. As expected, the gaming experience with this build is amazing. I'm currently playing a lot of Overwatch 2 and can have it set to Ultra and still get 4K 144Hz consistently. I've also been playing Spider-Man Miles Morales and it looks stunning in 4K. Everything is buttery smooth and I pretty much set every graphical setting to the max. 
happy to see Sony bring this game to PC. I didn't do any proper thermal testing though, as there are tons of videos already out there testing the 4080 and the 7950X. The 7950X also does like to run hot, so I've set the fan curves to be pretty low so that it only goes full speed when the temps get around 90, 95 degrees. I wasn't able to even get the fans going full speed anyway when I played the games that I usually play. It was pretty silent to be honest and the tempered glass panel definitely helps isolate some of that sound. For the total cost of this build, you're looking at over $3,000, which is just crazy. But I also just don't think that's actually too bad. I mean, of course the 4080 FE is probably considered overpriced, but $3,000 is you know, still cheaper than my 14 inch MacBook Pro, which I use for work every day. Even though they're both very different machines, PC and Mac, I feel like this PC is obviously a lot more capable when it comes to doing sort of graphical work in gaming. I'm very happy with the performance so far. I really love this case. I wanted a silent beast that also looks clean and understated and this delivers. I also wanted to share my gaming setup itself and how I have everything organized basically. It hasn't really changed much since I last shared it, but I wanted to go through it anyway. I have a white 140 by 60 centimeter lag captain tabletop from Ikea on top of Alex drawers and a trestle. I have my PC on the trestle itself. It's a good way just to save some desk space and to make it even quieter when I'm playing games. To the right, I have an Ikea shelving unit which holds a bunch of random stuff. This is also where my internet access comes into the building. So there is an overload of wires which I can't really do much about. I'm currently using the Doe Spectrum, specifically the glossy version. Absolutely amazing monitor. I love it. It's just a shame that the company itself doesn't really have a good reputation when it comes to delivering orders. I have it mounted to a fairly simple monitor arm from Amazon. I'll leave a link to the wallpaper in the description as well for anyone who's interested. It's from my holographics wallpaper pack. I'm actually hoping to replace the monitor with LG's upcoming 240 Hertz OLED monitor that is expected in January. So yeah, that's something I'm definitely looking forward to. I have the Loop Deck Live, which is used for shortcuts. It's actually really useful when I'm playing games as I can quickly do things like save gameplay and control my music. And you can also, of course, set it up to do so many other things. I have a native Union wireless phone charger, which keeps my phone charged, but also at an angle so I can see it whilst gaming. My current keyboard is the Mode Sonnet. Absolutely incredible keyboard. My spec has the black top with the brass accent, a brass bottom plate and a brass wave internal weight. It has the Gatoron Oil King switches with the GMK Modern Dolch keycaps, at least I think that's how you say it, which have a really nice two-tone gray look to them. This is one of the highest quality keyboards I've ever used. It's not cheap, but you can't really fault the design and the quality of it. When it comes to the mouse, I'm actually using a fairly cheap one, the Logitech G305. I've had it for years now and haven't really had any reason to change it. It's great. I have the keyboard and mouse also sitting on a ULX desk pad. My main gaming headset is the Corsair HS80. The sound quality of it, I think is pretty average, but I primarily got it for the mic. I didn't want to have an external mic taking up space on my desk. The HS80 has one of the best headset mics I've ever heard. I also, of course, have my PS5, which to be honest, doesn't get as much use as it should, but it's great for exclusive games. And then I finally have my Herman Miller Aeron chair. I game here most nights for a couple of hours. It's a super comfortable setup. And now with this new build, I can continue being a toxic AF player, but with better graphics.